friends welcome back to a new vlog a new week or oh, not really actually it's saturday um and i wanted to sit down and talk to you guys it's been a while my vlogs don't really like upload in real time so there's often quite a delay so i feel like i haven't sat down and spoken to the camera for a while but yeah been on the struggle bus aren't we all in this time of year although it is so beautiful outside today and it was really beautiful yesterday morning we're getting like really crisp clear mornings in amsterdam it tends to like all fall apart after lunch and get quite wet but opening the curtains and it's like bright blue sky at like quarter to eight in the morning and it is gorgeous so i have to go outside today i haven't actually been outside in like six days which is bad one of my like new year's habits i'm tracking on my still tracker is to go outside at least three times a week um which might not seem like a lot for a lot of people but i live in a first floor apartment M my partner pushes my wheelchair when we leave the house like i don't really have that ability to just pop out very often um so yeah i've been trying to stand on my balcony a bit more feel some fresh air we also don't have windows like we are our apartment is like bookended by huge massive doors which are amazing and they let in so much light but there isn't it's like you either have the doors open or you know what I mean you can't like open a bedroom window so actually yesterday morning I opened the doors for the first time this year and it was really lovely so I'm gonna do that again this morning <clears throat> we have a chill weekend our friends are recovering from covid so I don't think we're gonna see them although I think they might be testing negative now but still feeling quite rotten so they're who we usually hang out with there is a yarn club meet up tomorrow but I'm not sure if I feel like going I haven't been knitting in like 10 days because my some of my issues with my hand pain has come back which has really been getting me down so I just haven't felt like knitting in combination with like being at quite a frustrating point of my knitting that I can't just do it mindlessly but I really want to finish this baby beanie I started from scrap yarn for a friend um quite cute oh my god it has so many ends to weave in I guess I could actually just sit down and weave the ends in instead of work on the decrease if I don't feel like it it's quite cute it's like lots of different stripes it's all merino wool you can't really see the green one but yeah um all from scraps so actually I really do want to finish that today but I thought I would talk to you about books first I am halfway through Pet by Catherine Ching Chidji. Chid? That font's really hard to read. Um, Chidji. This is set in New Zealand at a Catholic school. It follows a sort of elusive and, you know, well loved essentially teacher, Mrs. Price, with her class and two girls in particular, Anna. No, Amy and Justine and Justine's mother dies of cancer and so Mrs Price sort of takes quite a close eye to Justine and wants to sort of take her under her wing and she's very glamorous and like drives this American car that's been imported where you sit on the wrong side and everyone wants to be her pet the teacher's pet she picks these people to stay after class to like help her with things sends her to the pharmacy to pick up her prescriptions and Justine sort of becomes the biggest pet of all and gets to go to her house and help her clean and stuff um whereas amy is the child of immigrants is uh, one of the only like non-white students in the whole school and is often picked upon her parents around the local grocery store and people spread rumors about sort of yeah about the way her family are and you know like classic xenophobic racism about the food that she eats and the um that her family are liars and that they are like trying to get one over on the good working class citizens of the town um and so we flash between justine as a grown-up and the 1980s story of her at school and uh, we don't really get much of at least where i'm at now with where with her present day story but things start going missing in the classroom and they're trying to work out who did it. Things start showing up in odd places, including in Mrs. Price's house. And there's something ominous occurring, but we don't really know what it's going to be. It's, it was, I was reading it last night. Last night, yesterday I had a really bad day and was like, felt like my nervous system was just like fried by the end of the day. I couldn't get my heart rate down. I felt so frazzled, no matter how many like meditations I did or writing stuff down, talking to friends, like I just couldn't. Like, you know, and you just feel like your mind is running a million miles an hour. 
and I was reading this book in bed and then I was like actually this isn't the move for right now because it was putting me on edge and that's testament to the writing but also just like I didn't need more to add to the noise before bed do you know what I mean so I put it down but I am looking forward to continuing with it and really enjoying the setting like reading a book set in New Zealand and yeah it's a good time so far we'll see um, I also wanted to show you two books that I picked up in the secondhand bookshop, which is called Just Use English Books, like in the red light district. It's really cool and I really like it and you can find some really great stuff. Haven't been in ages. They have definitely put their prices up. But then this one like shocked me because this was purchased at the American Book Centre, which is like a normal bookstore in the city for 26 euros. And I think I got it for six. So that was good. This is Cult Classic by Sloane Crosley. I remember reading about this when it came out and I wouldn't have dropped 26 euros on it because I think it's like a one and done book that I would read and then, you know, never think about it again. But I, oh, it's got a bookmark in it. Someone only made it to page 33. Well, they gave it up. Um, I think it's going to be quite witty and rompy. One night in New York City's Chinatown, Lola is at dinner with former colleagues when she excuses herself to buy a pack of cigarettes. On her way back, she runs into a former boyfriend and another and another. The city is awash with a ghost of heartbreaks past. What might have passed for a coincidence becomes something stranger when the recently engaged Lola must contend not only with the viability of her current relationship, but the fact her best friend and former boss, a magazine editor turned mystical guru, might have an unhealthy investment in its outcome. So yeah, I think it sounds quite funny and absurdist, perhaps. I can't really, I remember having Buzz before it came out, but I don't really remember people's reviews of it. But anyway, it was six euros and I thought I would read it, like perhaps on a holiday or something. And since it was in the second hand bookshop, you kind of got to pounce when you see them because you won't see it the next time you're in there. And then this was the deal of the century. I have wanted to buy this book and for since it came out, which I think was last summer. It's in... It was published in Australia and then it came out with Macmillan and this is a proof that they were selling which sometimes they do at the bookshop which I know is not necessarily always right but I don't really care. The font is quite small but it was again 25 euros new and I just hadn't bought it because I was like oh, I'll wait just in case it does come out in audio eventually but often books like Australian Canadian books take a really long time to get on audio unless they go on to Everand. Anyway, this is called, I put this in a radar for sure last year, it's called Anam by Andre Dow and it says, born to a Vietnamese family in Melbourne, a human rights lawyer is haunted by the story of his grandfather, a refugee in prison for 10 years in Saigon's notorious Chi Hao prison. He oscillates between the identities of his Australian upbringing and his Vietnamese heritage, the death of his father in a Par Parisian suburb and the birth of his daughter that crystallises strands that have shaped his life. A remarkable debut blends fiction and essay philosophy and everyday life. To imagine what has been repressed, left out, forgotten by the archives and the families. Moving from 1930s Hanoi to a series of seemingly never-ending wars and displacements between Saigon, Paris, Melbourne and Cambridge. A novel of memory, inheritance, colonialism, belonging, exile and home. I didn't realise this blended fiction as well, but I do now I've said that I, I do remember that in the original reading of it. But yeah, I think this would be so interesting. I love books about recent Vietnamese history and obviously like the Vietnam War and never read a book about the Vietnamese Australian experience although I do remember when I was in Australia which was probably like 10 years ago now backpacking meeting a lot of Vietnamese people eating a lot of Vietnamese food and like experiencing their immigrant community in the areas we were staying in so as well as I've also been to Vietnam and absolutely fell in love with that and I'm still heartbroken because Tom and my mum and me had a top I had a trip booked there that was cancelled because of the pandemic and we haven't managed my health has decreased so much since then that we haven't managed to make it happen but um yeah I'm really excited to dive into this one so I'm so pleased to find it secondhand for I think I paid five euros for it and it's, it looks like it's literally never been read that was amazing I just started an audio book I can't remember the name of no well actually I'll tell you I did start listening to some people deserve to be mad some people deserve to die some people just anyway this book is on the women's prize list non-fiction the inaugural prize I made a video about my thoughts on the prize my thoughts about non-fiction books and like how they're shelved in publishing and that kind of stuff over on my patreon if you wanted to hear more of me going through the whole list but I started listening to this before 
um, the list came out because I saw it on a friend's Instagram story. This is a book about Duterte's war on drugs in, and Duterte was, is he a president or prime minister? I can't remember how they run their politics there, but anyway, he's the leader of the Philippines and I remember following him, like his reign as it started. I think that was 2015, don't quote me. But anyway, I remember following the war on drugs um, because I think it was a similar time to, I've never been to the Philippines, but it was a time where I was traveling. And essentially he created a zero tolerance policy for not only drug selling, but drug use. And he ordered these vigilante armed and disguised police officers we're not really sure people aren't really sure who it was doing the killing but basically sent out thousands of armed and masked men to murder i think sixty thousand people were killed people who were with had substance abuse issues essentially in impoverished parts of the philippines as well as then he murdered a lot of drug like low foot soldier drug gang members higher up people in the drug trade and then he started killing like mayors and people in politics he incarcerated a lot of journalism he really hated the free press and human he like threw out a lot of human rights activists and ngos and was just like he's truly scum of the earth but uh, this book follows the perspective of a filipino journalist who works for a it sounded a bit like Vice, like a sort of on the ground, street mic type um, news service, which was obviously quite big in the in the 2010s, interviewing and going and visiting all of these deaths. Um, and she, like I say, is Filipino, but is talking about, yeah, how it's hard to separate herself from the work and sort of Duterte opinions on yeah journalism as well as on the war on drugs and i started i probably listened to an hour and a half and it was so dark like it, this is no sort of i don't think this is a criticism of the work or of the writer it, because it's so evocative but there's so much like play-by-play -play explanation of the killings like so many involved children and i just don't feel like i'm in the headspace to listen to that right now especially with like witnessing what's going on in real time in the news which is something that you know we should continue to look at and pay attention and shout about especially because i have been listening to my audio but today at night it was like really some very intense nightmares were coming out of this and i was like you know what? i actually don't need to listen to this so i don't think it's the book for me but i am um, like i kind of wish i could read it and i maybe would pick try again and read it in like physical form instead of on audiobook if you've read it, I would love to hear from you what you thought, if maybe the like really graphic descriptions of like, because it talks about like, the bullet wounds and like, you know, five year old children, you know, them every step before they get killed. Because it was basically also that he Duterte didn't order the murder of children, but there was a lot of people, innocent people caught in the crossfire. Also, there was a lot of innocent people who were killed purposefully. But um yeah let me know if, if it becomes less <clears throat> less focus on individual killings and more is talking about that you know zoomed out version or if that she continues to go down that like telling the human stories in every chapter it's fine either way but i don't think it's the book for me so yeah then i but so i put that out for now so this morning when i was lying in bed and i wasn't ready to get up i just started a random book on i was like oh i really need a book about nothing an audiobook non-fiction about nothing so then I went for this which is a book about the mall like about shop well in England you'd call them shopping centres um which sounds really dull but I have been known to also read a non-fiction book about car parks like retail store car parks um and sometimes I am interested in in urban geographies and sort of like not city planning, but just more like the construction of these places that fill a void in society and like the, the mall or the shopping centre is such a representation of like late stage neoliberal capitalism, but that like people are falling away from using them or finding them interesting. And then it talked briefly in the introduction about like the malls in Asia 
and uh, the Middle East where they're like often refuge for extreme weather and people relying on them as sorts of like air conditioning and you know escaping UV and it, yeah it is interesting so far I think she's from Canada the author's from Canada talking and like I think Canada where she's from in Edmonton has the biggest mall in the world or like it has a mall with a roller coaster theme park in it and she she's just talking starting to talk about that um and yeah I don't know if I'll see it through to the end maybe it's just filling what I need it to do right now but it's interesting nonetheless so far but yeah I'd love some audio recommendations from Everand if you are also using that to put audiobooks of like those kinds of books that are really I don't know aren't too intense non-fiction I like would love another book like Jesus and John Wayne which was a religious book I read would love another book like I'm looking at my bookshelf while I'm talking to you by the way um the Premonitions Bureau, those kinds of non-fiction books that are like deeply interesting or the Book of Difficult Fruit that are interesting and a bit niche but not attached to necessarily like contemporary politics or issues um, and I also don't really feel like reading a memoir right now so yeah I know this video will go out later but I'm always in the mood to listen to more non-fiction so yeah shout me if you have a recommendation also like nothing over eight or nine hours that's where i have to draw the line because I, <laughs> it's really hard for me to pay attention to an audiobook for that long especially if it's on fiction but yeah that's what's up it's good to chat tom's gone to the supermarket and i'm going to photograph some stuff of vinted today and maybe film a video another video that's not this video but i will chat to you perhaps when I read more pet or if I pick up anything else. day in Amsterdam I feel so blessed to be I mean Tom just keeps saying like I think we did it I think we made it through the worst bit um because yeah even if it does rain a bit it is just waking up to blue sky like we opened the curtains at 7 45 and it was just bright blue and I was like oh this is the best bit of the year is starting even if this is full of spring let me be a fool for a couple of weeks um but yeah, it's Sunday, like I said, we, Tom did some cooking this morning for meal prep and I photographed a lot of pairs of trousers. Why is trying on clothes for like Vinted or Depop so exhausting? I did that. Um, he's now doing the washing up, which you can hear. <laughs> and this afternoon, I think I might risk it for a chocolate biscuit and go out to see friends for um a little while we're thinking about a walk around the park and a drink and a game of cards at the brewery which is a lovely sunday afternoon activity obviously i don't drink anymore but we are blessed in this country in the european bible belt <laughs> not bible belt beer belt we do have a bible belt in this country but that's not where i live um 
to have so many good non-alcoholic beers I could also really smash a fresh mint ginger tea so yeah I think we are just making plans to decide where to go and it does look I, it's meant to rain a bit later but hopefully not for a little while I have an absolutely banging headache that started last night which is really annoying but maybe fresh air will help I'm not sure um I'm actually going to be brave tomorrow and call the doctor my GP did have had a turbulent relationship with Dutch GPs, but then what the most recent one I saw for Christmas was really kind, so I'm hoping she'll continue to be kind. Um, and what else? Oh, I finished, but I need to weave in the end. I finished this baby hat, which, like, let's just look at it like this adorable, right? Little scrappy project. How many ends do I have to weave in? I showed it to Tom and I was like, it's avant garde. Imagine. It's kind of looks like a dinosaur. But um, I'm going to do that this evening. Last night we were going to watch a film and I was going to do it, but my headache ensued. So I am going to do that tonight, maybe. But I did read a book, so much of a book yesterday, which was not pet. I just picked this up randomly on my Kobo. I don't remember where I bought it or if it was like a proof or what happened. But it's published by an indie in the UK called Duckworth Books. It's called In Ordinary Time. I remember seeing it in a bookshop last... February, I'm pretty sure, when Tom and I were somewhere for our anniversary. Where did we go? Can't remember. Some random village. Oh, Marlow. And um, I was in the Marlow bookshop and I saw it and I took a photograph of it. And I must have, maybe it was on a deal on Kobu. I really can't remember. Anyway, it's by Carmel McManon and it's about her experience leaving Ireland in the early 90s to move to New York she's reflect she's now in her 40s and she's reflecting on that life she developed an alcohol dependency and had like a, has just had a very turbulent experience living abroad which obviously that the living abroad part is really relatable to me and she taught it's just one of those non-fiction personal writing books that is what I aspire to produce like it's so beautifully written it's so articulate and smart and comments on so many different parts of the social history it reminds me it's a completely different topic but it really reminded me of my friend Rebecca's book Small Fires why did I want to call that something else then um in the way that it weaves together yeah those big macro things with the micro so she talks about the history of the laundries and the mother and baby home. So she was born, no, she, like her mother was born out of wedlock, um, obviously like earlier in the 20th century. And if you don't know, there's like a long history of church and state, the Catholic church in Ireland, which was staunchly anti um abortion and anti-single mothers and like it's a it's a sin to have a child outside of a heterosexual marriage um so she talks about that history and that it's about she talks all about tra trauma she quote, quotes the body keeps the score she really likes Carl Jung um and so she's talking a lot about philosophy and the imprint of trauma in less of like a scientific way but more about the carrying the burden of being an Irish woman and leaving at that point in the 90s as they were making progress and sort of she comes from a family of nine but tragically lost two siblings one died before she was born and one died when she was about three in a in a car accident or like was hit like she wasn't in the car she was a pedestrian this young girl and was hit um by a car and it's so tragic those stories and she talks about and then she like did she lose three siblings? No, that's the one who died before she was born, actually. And then she lost her brother to heroin. And she talks briefly about the heroin ep epidemic in Ireland that aligned with the economic downturn, which I didn't know about. But the book is just making me think so much about family history. And I've never been a person that interested in genealogy and, like, my family history because it's so sort of, like, fraught in our family to talk about those things. But... It made me think I am half Irish. If I, if you, if you're new around here, my dad was Irish, um, but he has been estranged for like twenty years. So, it, um, yeah, it just made me think so much about, and I was like, tell it, retelling these stories to Tom about my granny, like on his side that I did know when I was a little girl, and about just so many questions I wish I got to ask, and it's that thing of like people 
before it's too late like you don't and in this circumstance you obviously too late came very quickly but um you know even just like with your own grandparents if you're still in contact with them like just asking those questions about life and things they've been through and what what they got to see and how different the world was then and I think yeah I just was thinking so much about about yeah the Irish women in my family that I'll never know and never got to know and if it is I think too late but it is like making me wanna which I have this feeling every few years of like I should really go on that those websites and buy a kit and do whatever you're supposed to do to find out about who you're related to but yeah I just it's really just has one of those books that's floored me like it just struck me straight away and I'm really enjoying the reading experience of it so a detour from what I thought I was going to read this weekend but no complaints there at all She went better than expected, although my body feels like I've just been in some kind of armed, you know, robbery because the fight or flight is so real when you have bad experiences. It's just like even being in my local doctor's surgery makes me feel sick to my stomach. Like when I woke up this morning, even though I had like an hour and a half to kill, and that's not even that bad because my appointment was at like half eight, um, I already felt horrid so I'm really glad it was actually early because then I can reward myself when my favorite YouTubers uploaded the video so I'm excited to watch that um and I'm gonna meet a girlfriend for some knitting which will always be lovely so right now I'm gonna do some chores around the house that I need to like finish off when I go out namely packing up vintage orders and my parcel to send to my friend Rebecca I went to get a box at the weekend because I had Tom and I like you know, are so good at keeping all our packaging and stuff and then last week we had like four cardboard boxes sitting around I was like get rid don't need them they're clutching up the house and now of course I could have used one so I think I've shown you a million times but I finished little beanie and a bonnet so different in size this is for the winter this is for like the coming spring and then I went into Hema and got the little onesie I feel sick at how cute this is it's Miffy with like lemons and Miffy's bird and it's one of those popper all the way down ones which I've heard people say is much better than buttons so I hope they like it this was two to six months because the one month old one was so small and you never know what size people's babies are going to be so I thought it's like a ribbed cotton hunch and cotton um and it says it's got like adjustable closures so it can fit two different bits on here so I just thought you know what this will be cute they're expensive though baby clothes wild um so I got that and then I bought Rebecca some snacks because she's gonna be hungry so I got some Stroop waffle she did come to Amsterdam last summer so she has eaten these things before but I've got Stroop waffle because who doesn't love Stroop waffle and then I got some Easter treats our Easter treats here are really good if I say so myself like they make these eggs in so many flavors like hundreds of flavors um so I chose the milk praline filling which sounds delicious to me then I got these biscuits and I don't know what the translation is but Tom and I bought I saw them in Yumbo and I was like I'm gonna get them for myself and for Rebecca in case they're horrible I have to test you know but they're basically like shortbread biscuits with chocolate and then this like cream top filling which this filling when I bit into it tasted so nostalgic to me it tasted like did you ever have the mini eggs Easter cakes they were like six of a pack little chocolate cakes Flake also made them 
And like, do you remember, remember around, I just feel like I ate a lot more shop bought cake when I was a child compared to now I'm like a bougie, gotta get everything fresh in the bakery kind of person. But you know, like the packets of cakes, like Mr. Kipling. So they did these Cadbury's mini egg ones that were like chocolate sponge cake. Then they had this layer of like yellow cream and then they were covered in chocolate and then they had a mini egg on top. And that yellow filling of these tastes exactly like the filling from those mini egg cakes. And that is fantastic for me. I love eating stuff that reminds me of childhood. Like it's so soothing. So that's what I then ate for. So that was good. <laughs> I'm gonna pack up this. I'm just gonna do it while I talk to you about books, but I don't want it to be really loud. And also, can I even work out how to construct this box? That would be a good chance. Oh, I, I got her a really cute Mickey card as well. Oh, I did it. Also, not mad. Um, I wanted to update you on reading. I finished In Ordinary Time by Carmel Manor. And it got even darker. I won't lie to you. I would, this has big trigger warnings for drug abuse, sudden death. Like, it, it's her family has been through so much so I would just warn you as the reader also a lot of stuff about psychosis schizophrenia um and that kind of stuff which was really hard to read but so well written so well articulated that struggle of managing the family like being the being the sibling who wants to keep it all together I really enjoyed her turn of phrase and the way she brought up so many of those historical things I was talking about. We didn't get much more on the laundries, but she does circle back to some of those older um, traditions. She talks about sort of daylight savings and the way that the Celtic calendar works and starting the new year in darkness. And yeah, I really liked all of that. It is, I guess, semi-spiritual, but it felt like... I don't know, I just really enjoyed all the different tangents she went on. Speaking of tangents, and then I'm still reading Big More. I think I only have like an hour and a half left of the audiobook of this. Also in like enjoying it, and also mainly because of its tangents, because I feel like when I looked at this, I was like, I can't think I would read a whole, like it would become tedious to read a whole book about them all. But for example, right now she's talking about, she started off in a chapter talking about Sloth World, which is like this interactive sloth exhibit that lived in a shopping mall obviously deranged but then she's talking about the history of zoos and the difference and like the colonial sort of um starting point of zoos and exoticism and then weighing up with like her love of animals and how the first time she saw a lot of animals was at this like mall, mall zoo um so i really enjoy this hand that she's taking us on she talked about um previously like uh which was deemed at the time of like a moral panic of like more rats like people experiencing homelessness who are accessing the mall as a place to live um the murder of young indigenous like first nations girls in canada linked to people getting into kinds of things like in malls um and yeah just to really appreciate the journey she's taking us on it doesn't feel haphazard in any way i'm just sort of it feels well laid out within the chapters but it's not it would be a misnomer to call this like a book about malls because it's about so much more than that which is what I really enjoy so that's the reading update I haven't picked up pet actually in a few days I'm not really in the mood for it I actually haven't been reading the last couple of days I finished um in ordinary time on like Sunday evening I think or Monday morning and yeah just been audio booking since then it's been a busy work week but might choose something new or might just persevere and finish pet and then the weekend I can start all new things. So I'll probably check in with you. Actually, I think I'll just sign off the vlog now because I'm kind of into having these like shorter five or six day videos instead of super long at the weekend. We are sorting out our balcony. Um, and not much else to be honest, I'm getting coffee with a book friend. So perhaps I will choose some books to take to her. And that's about it, but I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.